When you look at certain NFL teams, it's not hard to figure out why they're picking in the top portion of the NFL draft pretty much each and every single year. And you look at a team like the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's easy to figure out why they're in the position that they are, picking again in the top five, frankly, picking again in the top three in the 2015 NFL Draft. This is a team that just doesn't seem to get it. This is a team that has been bad for a period of time and doesn't necessarily seem to be getting a whole lot better. You look at 2014 and you bring in your first round pick, your rookie quarterback, Blake Bortles. The era has begun, but yet you end up still finishing 3-13. and You could maybe point to at some moments seeing some improvements, but it was a lot more of the same in all different areas for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a big reason for this is because of their failures in the NFL draft, especially over the past five years. This is a team whose track record in the draft has been atrocious, maybe as bad, if not worse, than any team in the National Football League. I challenge you to really truly name a hit that they've had in the past five years in any round in the NFL draft. I mean, any hit. Are well, you going to say maybe like a Cecil Shorts, he gone? A Denard Robinson? I mean, do those guys even really classify as hits? I mean, maybe in 2014, maybe you look at a guy like Telvin Smith, their fifth-round pick, the linebacker out of Florida State. He might fit into that category of being somebody a year or two for now that I classify as a hit, a Malcolm Smith type of guy or a K.J. Wright type of guy. He might be the closest thing they've had to a hit over the past five years. The problem is that was in 2014, and he was a fifth-round pick. That should say all that you need to know about the Jacksonville Jaguars and why they find themselves in the positions that they find themselves in. But there's more to it. You look at some of the misses. You very much look at that entire draft class of 2010. That was a wash. And then in 2011, because somebody involved with that organization, whether it was the head coach, Jack Del Rio, the general manager, Eugene Smith, somebody fell in love with, with Blaine Gabbert for whatever fuck reason that still defies logic to me to this day. And obviously Blaine Gabbert proved himself to be the big miss that I said he was going to be coming out of Missouri. He was terrible. When you look at 2012, you spend the you trade up actually to the fifth overall pick to get a guy in Justin Blackman who can't put the fucking bottle down. A very talented player when he's on the field, but he misses so much game action because again, he can't keep the bottle away from his fucking mouth. So you missed on pretty much your entire 2010 class. You've missed on your 2011 first-round pick, and that was a quarterback, so that really set your organization back years. As you could see now, the Jacksonville Jaguars again picking in the top three in this year's 2015 NFL draft. And then you miss on a top five pick in Justin Blackman because not due to talent or system fit, due to, again, his inability to take the bottle away from his freaking mouth. And then you look at the question marks, too. I mean, you look at that 2013 class. This was something that so many people were pointing to with new coach Gus Bradley and new general manager David Caldwell. This is going to be a great draft class. And it wasn't shit. It hasn't done shit for him. The best player out of that draft class is probably Jonathan Cyprian, and he's most certainly nothing special. There's huge question marks about their second overall pick, Luke Jokel, and whether or not he's a long-term offensive tackle, let alone a left tackle at the NFL level. And you look at 2014. They got the third overall pick on Blake. Bortles. Like somebody in that organization, namely did call and the people around David Call, thought apparently that Blake Bortles was the third best player, Sherry thought is, maybe even higher, in the 2014 NFL draft. And especially of all, thought this guy was the best quarterback in the year's draft class. And you saw with Blake Bortles, this was a guy that lacked on strength, like I talked about heading into this draft, a guy that needs a lot of work and leaves you with some big question marks. Maybe there's some foolish optimism there for the Jaguars organization, the Jaguars fan base in part because he is a young quarterback and a lot of things can happen. And he does have some pieces around him on the offensive side of the ball, but damn it all. He didn't look that good as a rookie. He didn't give you that much reason for optimism or hope. I truly believe that. And you look at this offseason again, it was another situation of the Jaguars having a ton of cap space, so they were going to have to sit there and really compensate for their failures and misses over the past five NFL drafts by spending big money in free agency. And while some of the moves that they made I actually liked this year, bringing in somebody like a Julius Thomas, yeah, you're getting him away from Peyton Manning. It's kind of scary to think about it, but... If I'm going to gamble, I'm going to gamble on somebody with that type of athletic upside at tight end, especially when I have a young quarterback in Blake Bortles, somebody that could use a tight end. A tight end can be 
a quarterback's best friend in the passing game. And then they bring in somebody like Jared Odrick uh, from Miami, a guy who I think fits into that almost kind of elephant end role of Gus Bradley's defense that they run. But then they spend big money on guys like Jeremy Parnell and Dan Scuda and Devon House. I understand you've got money to spend and you have a certain minimum that you have to spend, but couldn't you find better players to help you get to that minimum than Jeremy Parnell, Dan Scuda, and Devon House? I mean, seriously, these are some of the big moves that the Jacksonville Jaguars are making in the offseason to try and help compensate for their failures in recent years in the draft. You know, it's just like last year. They brought in guys like Toby Gerhardt. They brought in guys like Chris Clemens and Red Bryant. They got themselves older, but they didn't necessarily get themselves better. Hence, it's reflecting in the 3-13 and record. And some of these moves that they made don't suggest to you that they're going to get a whole lot better. Well, until the Jacksonville Jaguars start to figure out the NFL draft, until the Jacksonville Jaguars start to be successful in the NFL draft, there's absolutely nothing that's going to change. When you look at this team's needs in terms of this year's NFL draft, there are needs all over the place on both sides of the ball. You won't go with quarterback yet because you've only had one year of Blake Bowles, and you need to do a better job of protecting him and surrounding him with help. But that should be where the lion's share of the focus of this draft is, is on the offensive side of the ball. They need to find a left tackle because Luke Jokel ain't cutting it. I don't care if you sign Jeremy Parnell to play the right side, then flip him into guard or flip Jokel to right tackle, put Parnell at guard, flip Jokel to fucking guard. He's not a left tackle. He's proven it already in two years. And as a result, you look at how much – Bortles was consistently under siege behind that weak-ass, punk-ass offensive line that the Jaguars had. How is any quarterback, young or veteran, going to be successful in that type of situation? There's pressure bearing down on you all the time because these guys can't fucking block. They're not good. Not good at all. I mean, you got something out of Brandon Linder, your right guard, your third-round pick, and then, you know, that's about it. The rest of the offensive line was really bad, really, really bad. And for a young quarterback, or any quarterback, frankly, to have success at the NFL level, he's going to need something to be able to count on in front of him with that offensive line. They also need a running back. This is a team that really badly needs an identity in the running game that left when Maurice Jones drew left town. They need to find that type of guy that can be that bell cow back. They need that guy that can provide that additional protection like a Julius Thomas can for a Blake Bortles in the past game. Now they need a guy that can help mask some of the deficiencies in that offensive line in the running game and also provide Blake Bortles with some additional protection and help via a running game. They must find a running back. The good news for the Jaguars is it's a running back class that is deep, loaded, talented, and as a result, they should be able to find a guy. They just have to be smart enough to realize that they need to get a guy. They also need a number one wide receiver. I look at guys like Allen Robinson and Marquise Lee and Allen Hearns. These are solid players, guys that I think will be contributors at the NFL level for years to come, but none of them that I envision being a truly number one type of guy. And I mean, if you're going to count on Justin Blackman coming back in 2015 and being that number one guy, good luck to you. You need a long-term answer. You need that number one type of talent. Now, I don't know if it's going to come out of this draft class. Another really good wide receiver class, that's true. But I'm just not sure that they're going to be in a position where they could draft one, although I think they are. It's just a matter of whether or not they would pull the trigger. And even defensively, they still need help at defensive end, no matter how many draft picks they've invested in that position, no matter how much they've invested money into that position. It always seems to be a problem every year, and it is again. They also need help to me desperately in that secondary. They're terrible. They need help at corner. They need help at safety. They need help all over the place, period. Uh, when it comes to draft philosophy for the Jacksonville Jaguars, here's what I'm looking at. This is a team with some picks to be able to make some difference. But the first and foremost thing they must do is they must get it right. They can't screw up that third overall pick. They must find a guy that unlike recent first round picks over previous years can actually come in and not only contribute right away, but be a star and be a star and a pillar for that franchise and a building block for that franchise for many, many years to come. 
Now, what position is that going to come from? I could make a very big argument that this organization should potentially take Kevin White with the third overall pick out of West Virginia. Again, as I emphasize, they need a number one wide receiver in a bad way. And especially considering you just drafted a young quarterback with a third overall pick last year, and there's no offensive tackle worth spending a top three pick on in this year's draft, the best help you can provide Blake Bortles is to bring in a real legitimate number one wide receiver that allows Allen Robinson to be your number two, that allows you to slide Marquise Lee into the slot where he's probably best suited at the NFL level. You can bring in Allen Hearns in certain types of deep ball and red zone situations, and you really help Blake Bortles in put him in a situation to potentially succeed. We could also look at them taking a guy like Dante Fowler, the edge rusher out of Florida. While not the most explosive from a pure athleticism and speed standpoint of the edge rushers in this year's draft, I think he's the most complete and well-rounded of the players, and he's a guy that I envision that could be a really good fit in Gus Bradley's 4-3 defensive system. He's a guy that you could stand up and play at strong side linebacker. He's a guy that you could have put his hand down some and be kind of that Leo player, if you will. You know, you look at guys like Kevin White, and you look at guys like, like again, a Dante Fowler. Those are guys to me that either one of them, if the Jaguars took them, that would be a great pick because these are guys that can come and contribute right away and most importantly of all, be stars. Actually be a chance for the Jaguars not to screw up the third overall pick. Some might point to, well, what if a Leonard Williams is there? Frankly, I don't think Leonard Williams is a great systematic fit for them, and I don't think he's the best player on the board. You know, They must hit with the third overall pick. They must prove that they can do something right in the NFL draft because otherwise nothing else matters. But in large part with this draft, again, they must get help for Blake Bortles. He's your guy. He's the identity of your organization right now. He's the reason you have any type of hope, delusional or not. He's the reason for hope. Therefore, you must help him. If you spent, let's say, six of your seven picks in this draft on the defensive side of the ball, then you're missing the point. If you sit there and spend two of your first three picks on the defensive side of the ball, then you're screwing up and you're missing the point like the Jaguars so often do. They must get Blake Bortles' help on the offensive line, at running back, and a number one wide receiver. And then when I look at it from a defensive standpoint, they need to find guys that are systematic fits. You would think a guy like Gus Bradley, who comes from a system in a team, in an organization in the Seattle Seahawks, that found all pros in fifth-round picks like Cam Chancellor and Richard Sherman, you would think that a guy like Gus Bradley, who's around that, would be able to identify, along with their general manager, David Caldwell, guys that could fit their system that would fall to them in the day three portion of the draft, guys that they can work with, that they can coach up and make into really solid, at least, contributors. Because God knows the Jacksonville Jaguars need them all over the freaking place, especially in the back portion of that defense in the secondary. But at the end of the day, even if they didn't find a lot of help there, the biggest thing of all is the Jaguars cannot possibly screw up this third overall pick and then once they get that third overall pick right, which is not a guarantee that they would do because, again, they are the Jacksonville Jaguars, although in this particular case, based off the talents that are there and the position that they're in, I find it very hard for them to screw up. But, again, this is a Jaguar, so anything is fucking possible. After they don't screw up that third overall pick, they must help Blake Bortles because at the end of the day, that's the identity of the organization. The only chance that the Jacksonville Jaguars have to be successful is to make sure that Blake Bortles develops into a franchise quarterback. You're trying to compete in a division with Andrew Luck. If you can make Blake Bortles that guy, that instantly makes you no worse than the second best team in that AFC South division. Because who knows what Tennessee has, even though they might end up with Mariota. Who knows what the Houston Texans have, because they're a bunch of idiots. They would rather have Jadavion Clowney than Teddy Bridgewater, because again, they're stupid. Um, but the Jaguars, again, they must help Blake Bortles. They've done a good job in terms of last year's draft with finding some pieces on in the receiving core and a piece in Brandon Linder on the offensive line, bringing in a guy like Julius Thomas in the offseason to be that security blanket, that safety valve, that playmaker at the tight end position. But they have to help him out more because that's the only way you're going to succeed. You'll hear this logic of, well, you have to get after Andrew Luck. You have to be able to beat Andrew Luck that way. How did that work out for so many years with the Houston Texans trying to beat Peyton Manning? No, you need to beat him with your own quarterback and your own talent around said quarterback. That's the challenge, and that's the job facing the Jacksonville Jaguars in this 2015 NFL draft. Oh, and for once, try not screwing up your first-round pick.